In the world of fighter jets, there are the big boys, the American Eagles, the Russian Bears, and the European Super Squads. Then, from the land of sensible furniture and meatballs, came the Saab Gripen. And when it first appeared, you have to admit, people laughed. They looked at this little Swedish upstart and thought, is that it? It was like bringing a well-behaved Volvo to a drag race against monstrous V8 muscle cars. The early whispers in the corridors of power were not kind. It was dismissed as a boutique project, a plucky but ultimately doomed attempt by a small country to play with the big military powers. It was, in short, considered a bit of a joke. The problem initially was the price tag and the perception of its power. Back in 2012, projections put the cost at over $100 million a pop. For that kind of money, people expected something with the brute force of a sledgehammer, not the precision of a surgeon's scalpel. They wanted more engines, bigger wingspans, and a general sense of overwhelming might. The Gripen, with its single general electric engine, seemed underwhelming. It didn't look like it could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the twin-engine behemoths that dominated the market. Critics lined up to point out its perceived shortcomings, predicting it would be too expensive for what it was, and not powerful enough to matter. This early skepticism wasn't just about looks or firepower, it was about a fundamental misunderstanding of what Saab was trying to achieve. The world was obsessed with a bigger is better philosophy. Air forces wanted jets that could carry the most bombs and fly the farthest, no matter the cost. The Gripen's design philosophy was different. It was built for efficiency, for cleverness, and for adaptability. It was designed to do a lot with a little, to be operated from makeshift runways on frozen highways if needed. This was a completely alien concept to the generals who were used to massive, sprawling air bases and unlimited budgets. They simply couldn't get their heads around it. So the Gripen started its life as an underdog, swimming against a powerful current of doubt. It was the David in a world of Goliaths, the clever fox surrounded by lumbering bears. The established players in the aerospace industry looked on with a smug sense of superiority, confident that this little Swedish experiment would eventually run out of steam and fade into obscurity. They couldn't have been more wrong. The Gripen wasn't just another plane, it was the beginning of a whole new way of thinking about air power. A revolution was brewing, and almost nobody saw it coming. The punchline of the joke, it turned out, was on them. Then, something brilliant happened. The world changed and suddenly, the Gripen's weird ideas started to make a lot of sense. Budgets got tighter. Military planners realized that owning the most expensive jet in the world isn't much good if you can't afford to fly it. Saab, meanwhile, had been busy refining its creation. The projected price began to fall, settling at a much more reasonable $85 million. Suddenly, countries that had once scoffed at the cost were now leaning in for a closer look. The Gripen was no longer the eye-wateringly expensive option. It was becoming the sensible, cost-effective choice for a modern air force. But it wasn't just about being cheaper. The Gripen evolved into what can only be described as a smart fighter. Saab packed it with some of the most advanced technology on the planet. We're talking about media group, close-up of AESA radar antenna on fighter jet, pilot interacting with high-tech radar display at, at stock, added distribute underscore equally, a state-of-the-art ESA radar, which gives the pilot godlike vision of the battlefield, a sophisticated electronic warfare suite that can blind and confuse enemy systems, making it incredibly difficult to target. It's like giving a ninja a smartphone with an app for invisibility. This wasn't just a plane anymore. It was a flying supercomputer designed for one thing, survival and victory through superior information. What really sets the Gripen apart is its brain. The jet uses AI-assisted mission systems and full data link integration. This means it doesn't just fly, it thinks. It can share vast amounts of information with other Gripen jets, ground stations, and even other allied aircraft in real time. A squadron of Gripens in the air operates like a pack of wolves, each one knowing exactly what the others see and do. This network-centric capability gives it a massive advantage, allowing a small force of Gripens to have the tactical awareness of a much larger, more cumbersome fleet. It's not about the size of the dog in the fight, it's about how clever that dog is. So, the narrative began to shift dramatically. 
The jet that was once mocked for being too small and too expensive was now being celebrated for being lean, intelligent, and affordable. Its ease of maintenance became a huge selling point. You don't need a legion of highly paid mechanics to keep it in the air. It was designed to be turned around quickly, even on a remote stretch of road, ready for its next mission. The Gripen had successfully transformed its perceived weaknesses into its greatest strengths, proving that in modern warfare, brains often triumphs over sheer brawn. The world started to take notice. First, Brazil signed on the dotted line back in 2014, ordering a fleet of 36 Gripen E and F models. This wasn't just a sale, it was a partnership. Saab even set up a production facility in Sao Paulo, transferring technology and creating local jobs. This move showed that Saab wasn't just selling a product, it was building relationships. Then, in a huge vote of confidence, the Czech Republic, a NATO member, announced on June 27, 2025, that it was extending its lease on its Gripen fleet until 2035. They needed a reliable and proven jet to bridge the gap before their new F-35S arrived, and the Gripen was the perfect fit. The real bombshell, however, dropped on April 3rd, 2025. Colombia, after carefully weighing its options, announced it had chosen the Gripen as its next generation fighter. This was a massive win for Saab, planting its flag firmly in another key South American nation. The deal even came with some clever commercial offsets, like a promise to help build a solar panel factory in Colombia. It was a masterclass in diplomacy and business. There were even rumors that the United States tried to block the deal to push its own F-16. But Saab calmly confirmed all the necessary licenses were in place. The Gripen had officially arrived on the world stage, and it was winning major contracts. The Gripen's success isn't confined to sales announcements. It's a regular participant in major European military exercises, flying alongside jets from other NATO countries. In drills like Nordic Response, the Czech Gripens have demonstrated seamless integration with Allied forces, proving their capability in complex, high-stakes scenarios. This kind of operational trust from established military powers is priceless. It sends a clear message to the world. The Gripen is not a niche aircraft for neutral countries anymore. It is a credible, capable and battle-ready platform trusted by nations at the heart of Western defense alliances. What this string of successes demonstrates is a fundamental shift in what countries are looking for in a fighter jet. The Gripen offers a perfect blend of performance, technology, and affordability. It can reach speeds of Mark II and has a combat range of over 2,500 nautical miles, giving it plenty of pull. Yet, its operational costs are a fraction of its bigger rivals. For nations that need to defend their skies without bankrupting their treasury, the Gripen has become the go-to solution. It's the smart, logical choice in a world of increasingly complex threats and shrinking defense budgets. So what is the final verdict on the Saab Gripen? It is, without a shadow of a doubt, one of the greatest underdog stories in modern aviation history. From its humble beginnings as the subject of ridicule and skepticism, it has methodically and brilliantly clawed its way to the top tier of fighter aircraft, the very things it was once criticized for. Its small size, its single engine, its focus on efficiency have become the cornerstones of its global success. It proved that a different kind of thinking was not only possible but necessary in the 21st century battle space. The Gripen story is a powerful lesson that the most expensive or the most powerful tool isn't always the best one for the job. It offers an incredible balance. You get four and a half generation capabilities, including advanced sensors and network warfare systems that can rival more expensive jets, but at a purchase price and running cost that won't make your finance minister cry. This is why countries like Brazil, the Czech Republic, and now Colombia have embraced it. They recognize that it delivers the most bang for your buck, or rather the most strategic advantage for your krona, real or peso. Think of it this way. You could buy a Bugatti Veyron. It's stupendously fast and costs a fortune to buy, insure and run. Or you could buy a Porsche 911 GT3. It's still blisteringly quick, incredibly precise, and you can actually afford to use it every day without needing to own an oil field. 
The Gripen is the 911 GT3 of the fighter jet world. It's the smart, high-performance choice for those who value capability and efficiency over pure, impractical excess. It's a testament to Swedish engineering and foresight, a machine designed with a clear and intelligent purpose from the very beginning. In conclusion, nobody is laughing at the Gripen anymore. It has proven itself in exercises, won major international competitions, and earned the trust of air forces around the globe. It stands as a powerful symbol of how innovation, smart design, and a refusal to follow the crowd can lead to extraordinary success. The little Swedish jet that could has become a genuine game changer, a respected and formidable presence in the skies. The underdog has had its day, and its story is far from over. It is, quite simply, brilliant.